Robert Califf, I want you to give a score to the FDA on what we've seen in the recent weeks. It seems every article in the media is skewed by politics or emotion or an angle. You're the grizzled pro. How is your FDA done? I, I think what's remarkable about this is that the workforce of the FDA, 17,000 strong, has done an A-plus job. The politics have swirled around. There's been a lot of stuff in the press and pressure and all this, but fundamentally the FDA worked with uh, the industry to do the right development of the vaccines, the right clinical trials, and they've <coughs> thoroughly assessed in the public view uh, the results of the clinical trials. So I'd give the workforce an A+. Plus. Within your work in cardiology and the worries of shock, and I'm going to say a grim thing of anaphylactic shock and such, is there cardiac risk to the taking of the vaccine? Um, you know, there's a remote possibility there might be some tiny little cardiac risk, you know, for some people, but it would be a very rare thing if it happened. Remember, we have tens of thousands of people who have been in the clinical trials, not an evidence of any toxicity really at all other than some side effects you would normally see with a vaccine. So if there is a risk, it's very, very, very small. But you know, when you vaccinate millions of people, you will see, you know, some rare events that occur uh, with almost any vaccine. Well, that's so far outweighed by the benefits that we're seeing. Dr. Califf, sort of the heart of the question is, will this vaccine be any more dangerous because the process was expedited? That is the fear of some people who perhaps are unwilling to take the vaccine. What do you say to them? Well, we can have 100% confidence that it's not more dangerous for the first two months because we have the data. I mean, although the review was um, expedited, the trial was done like any other the, or the trials really were done like any other clinical trials. Uh, they were randomized, placebo controlled. Um, the patients were very, uh, the participants were very carefully followed up. Everything that happened was recorded. Um, it's there in the public view. It's been analyzed independently by the FDA, which remember is a really important role for the FDA. It's not just the company analyzing the data or even the researchers. Um, you have this third check of the FDA itself doing an independent analysis. So people should really be comfortable that, um, you know, we've got a lot of data showing that this is a safe and effective vaccine. Dr. Califf, in the meantime, we can see the number of cases rising dramatically, leading to shutdowns around the world. How quickly will this vaccine make a difference and actually change the trajectory of the pandemic? Well, you've heard a lot of talk from people, which I think is quite appropriate, that it's likely to be um, late spring, uh, really before we have a major effect. But it's not, it's not right to think of this as just sort of a binary yes or no sort of a thing. We'll see a gradual reduction in the transmission of the virus as the number of people who are vaccinated increases, combined with the number of people that have already been infected. And, and we can't forget, probably most important of all, during the vaccination period, as we're rolling all these people through, which has to be done carefully, social distancing and wearing a mask will make an enormous difference in the number of people who die between now and the time when the um, pandemic mm -hmm. is well. Robert Califf, at the margin, how do we convince or force anti-vaxxers to get back into society with vaccinations? Is it the job of government? Is it the job of business? Is it the easy job of transportation that says you're not getting on the whatever if you don't have a vaccine? What do you see as the mechanism to drag anti-vaxxers into a vaccination process? Well, first of all, I think we gotta separate anti-vaxxers from people who are hesitant. Those okay. are two groups. People who are deeply imbued in the ideology of anti-vax, I don't think we're going to change their minds. And I don't even think it's necessary for the most part that we force them to get vaccinated. We really need to focus on the people who are concerned and just, you know, want to be sure uh, that what they're doing is uh, in the best interests of uh, themselves, their families, and everybody else. And I think, um, you know, there, there's a massive campaign already underway to get knowledgeable people to speak out. Um, 
very important in all of this uh, are the clinicians, the doctors, the nurses, respiratory therapists, uh, people who know about healthcare and are going to be are first in line to get vaccinated. As we were talking earlier, my son, who's an emergency medicine doc, is getting vaccinated on Thursday. Um, these uh, most people I've talked with, even sophisticated professors back at Duke University, what they tell me is, I'm going to ask my doctor. Uh, for other people, it may be the nurse that they see frequently. We've got to really provide the human face to this information and about how important it is.